Uh, we both worked on different problems and different time with Gangpan. So, <laughs> and, and now... <laughs> All right, okay, so thank you. Oh, okay, um, so I will talk actually about sort of... Uh, uh, so, mainly about sort of <clears throat> Introduction is sort of so the following that um, you know many people so so, if, so right now so we have sort of a skyscraper of the commutative algebra or commutative methods, algebra geometry and such, and people are trying to have something in non-commutative analogs. There are different approach uh, to this one and. Uh, uh, <coughs> trying to use to adjust these methods to more commutative stuff, and so sometimes so they go somewhere here, and then they try to build, you know, some here, but going into this direction, and uh, sometimes so they even try just to have something like this and to go up. And uh, uh, so the project that. Uh, Galpan uh, started with me was actually to go down to Earth and just try to build something from scratch. And I'm talking basically about this ideology here, but I don't have any specific examples. And uh, this is so just with a uh, so, Arkady Bernstein uh, from the University of Oregon. Um, so, we tried actually to, uh, to construct a theory of non commutative sort of cluster algebra. <coughs> Just by using, but basically starting with basic examples. Okay, um, so let me just, uh, so I will start with a rather simple example and then move to the central part of the topic. And uh, um, so just a few years ago, so Hansevich made the following conjecture, which I will write in an equivalent form different from the original one, but it's equivalent. And it says so the following. So suppose you have um, just non-commutative variables wise, which are related to each other in the following manner. So basically, that's the main equation, or well, system of the equation. Mm -hmm. Now then, you know that this R sub k is equal to R1, mm -hmm. k is odd, and R2 k is even. So this is just sort of periodic. <coughs> and uh, then we have this relation. sort of like non-commutative quantum relations because you have this parameter z here but it, it is inside and z also uh, so the conjecture was then you may uh, so you may start with y1 y2 then you can define y3 using this and so on <coughs> so this is caution U uh, N uh, can be written <coughs> as a 
from polynomial mean that the polynomial in y t uh, So you have y2, y1. Uh, so it must be t minus 1 here. I just, so the difference is 2. <coughs> so that means that, for example, you have y1 <coughs> y2, then you can get y3 as a round polynomial, because you can divide by this stuff, and so on, and so on. The conjecture was that this will be a polynomial. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Yes, any question? Yes. Yes. So I, I'm pretty sure this p will depend on n also, right? But, uh, <coughs> yes, p depends but, uh, on n. I, I don't understand the role of z. At all. So, but uh, this is just a non commutative parameter. So, so and, and in this polynomial, z will not appear? Uh, yes, uh, z will appear, of course. Oh. <coughs> z will appear. Ah, oh, okay. And uh, so, this conjecture was actually proved by various people for small r1 and r2. It was known that in the commutative case it's true. So I was in R2. And then uh, so the first proof for the case when R1 and R2 was given by Uslich, uh, as a student of Kansevich, who used actually a rather sophisticated procedure and non-commutative resolution of singularities using derived categories. So it was highly not constructive, but it was just an existing this. And uh, I never met uh, a person who would understand this proof, to be honest. And so then with, uh, uh, so with our we sort of tried to prove this basically uh, using uh, methods of non-commutative high school algebra. So just uh, Manipulation with formulas. <coughs> and so we noticed actually that one can write the following, um, the following uh, sort of just equation. But it's again, this is just manipulation with formulas. There is no theory whatsoever. Okay. Uh, but uh, I uh, so, but I would like to talk, talk more about another and this is about so called Ptolemy. So this, so what yes. 
does this do? I mean, does it prove? Uh, it proves actually so that it proves so that uh, this will be just a Laurent phenomenon for any head. And for, <coughs> for general archaea or? For, for, uh, for, uh, for this periodic, if you have this, you need this periodicity, but in general case. That's, uh, that's a general case. <coughs> and if you have a periodicity 3, there is, it is not true, actually, mm -hmm. even in commutative case. So this is just an exception. Okay. Is there any motivation why he took that? Uh, he explained this. Uh, this is related to his approach to uh, non-commutative integrability. I will talk about this, but uh, he has actually a paper which I believe uh, which is called non-commutative identities. <coughs> this is in archive with just his talk never was published where he uh, just outlined this just uh, program and I will talk actually about proof of one of his his other recursion, which looks actually much more complicated than this. <laughs> now, but let me talk about just non commutative version of Ptolemy identity. First of all, let me remind you just the classical case. So, in the classical case, the following. So, suppose you have just quadrilateral inscribed in a circle and uh, x i j is just the length of the corresponding course. Then it's the classical actually also high school geometry which say that the product of the uh, corresponding two diagonals So when people, when people study triangulation of surfaces, they do the following. So they say that forget about circles. So if you have a tri triangulation, you impose just this condition. <coughs> and then you can actually ask the following. For example, when you have a surface or say you have have a polygon, a triangulation of this polygon, and uh, so, and then you have another diagonal, then you can go, <coughs> so then you change <coughs> those elements by so-called flip, flips, when you go just from this triangulation to this one. You can use this uh, identity just uh, to go from, say, IK to KL. And so on. And the question is can you find what kind of expression can you find for any diagonal? That is 
triangulation. Uh, so, any questions? So, what will we Yes. And in that case, what would be a flip and, and flip? No, there. Uh, I understand, but uh, you want to uh, represent this dotted or discontinuous diagonal. Yes. What does that mean that you want? Uh, you want to represent? So by I know, I know uh, variables which correspond yes. to this given. Yes. This. Yes. Yeah, and I say that mm -hmm. this guy can be written by using, you know, elements, these elements, such that uh, ij can be this, this, yes, this, this, so, and so, 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 so you can write this as an expression. So you're given a triangulation of the polygons, yes. and so that corresponds to these variables xij. Yes, okay. then I understand. And the question is, can you write any of the other diagonals as a But the writing, what does that mean, the writing, the, the diagonal? As a Laurent polynomial. For example, but, but you know, I mean, for example, when you have this, so let me just explain, for example, uh, so you have this I, J, K, L, and you go, so it's I, J, K, L, and you go here, 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 So you're assuming that in, in every quadrilateral you have this uh, Ptolemy yes, uh, yes. entity in and every quadrilateral that, that, that you ever encountered. This, oh, oh, I, oh, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, and so, so, so that this one, now there are, there are combinatorial descriptions of this, but I will give a combinatorial description in the non commutative case, which is actually. And so we try to understand actually this. This identity. And uh, uh, in a sort of a maximal or non commutative way, so non commutative. Can you ask a question about? So this thing here is a consequence of some theorem in cluster algebras? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was at the beginning, it was just the consequence of such theorem. <laughs> and then people find, the, they give a combinatorial description of such polynomials. But it follows from, <laughs> it was one of the first examples in this uh, cluster theorem. Uh, so what, how can we define non commutative term? So uh, so first of all, let me do the following. So here in the commutative case, I have elements xij or xji they are the same. In the non-commutative case, so they are different. So if you have i, j, then I think that this can be, that I, I may have two arrows from i to j. One arrow is x, i, j. Another one, x, j, i, So I'm always thinking, when we think about those elements as operators from well, space to space to space. And they are, so, but they are different. Xij is not the same as Xji, not the same as Xji. So this now, so now suppose I have this triangulation from k okay, and I would like to express this <laughs> the element, element x j l will be expressed as follows. 
I will write that this is x j k x i k inverse x i l plus x j i x k i inverse x k l okay so so first so first of all it's like the commutative case but I I have to push here different variables and also each of these terms can be interpreted <coughs> in the following way. So I can go from here to here, I go from J to K, then I go here, I intersect JL. And then I will come up to <coughs> this KI, this can be true, so this corresponds to this. And whenever I intersect, I write inverse. And this term, J, I, from I to K, also this is intersection. And Okay, uh, so I will explain just in five minutes why we choose this module. <coughs> but this is also, but this is not enough actually to to get uh, this one phenomenon. And I need one more relation <coughs> that you cannot see <coughs> in the commutative case. And let's. I have this polynomial, this triangle, so that's triangle dimensions. And uh, so I can write x j, x k j minus x k i. This is equals to x and k. Basically means that I go into this direction and I go in the opposite one and I have the same result. Now, in the commutative case, you don't you don't see it because if those guys commute and f i j is equal to f j i, that's its point. So, but if I will add. <coughs> uh, this relation, uh, so the, uh, this type of relations. To this one, then I can prove Laurent, the Laurent phenomenon, and I will show you just in a moment. But before, let me consider so, so the first application of this. Introduce so this sort of call this one to the 
and now from this supplies that so the seven depends on the on this trail. And now how to interpret this condition. This condition actually says that if I consider the sum of these two angles, CIJK plus CIKL, then I have TIJL. So you can add. <coughs> Upstairs? Uh, well, I have dots. Okay, yeah. so for example, so I have to add all possible angles. Yes. So I have to let me put two dots. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Two, two dots, all right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and then I can add those. Look at this, at this. I should tell that in the a commutative case in hyperbolic <coughs> geometry. Uh, such expressions were considered by Penner. So this is a sort of non-commutative generalization. So you, you are adding just the consecutive Yes, I'm adding the consecutive, but I can whatever I, I can change this triangulation and again add consecutive, and I will have the same expression. And for, for, for a given e i or or yes. what? So well, so I, I have to fix the vertex. You, you fix the vertex. The yes. Vertex, and then to add all angles which are attached to this vertex. I see. Uh, which sometimes will involve all, all diagonals, but sometimes, but sometimes yeah, so all because if I may change this, uh, this, 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 so I can change, I can take this, uh, this triangulation you know, to, or I can change only one. It doesn't matter, so that's a bad Okay, um, now maybe, let me just maybe formulate you just this, uh, this uh, Laran um, so phenomenon, so this is, and then I will explain how we arrived to this, but let me So, so I 
will consider actually just sets of indices from this <coughs> So this is just basically the set of vertices. Uh, such that xi uh, xi plus 1 is just a chord from this uh, triangulation. So this is that is from this triangulation. Well, so this is for any pair. There is a long definition and a short theorem. <laughs> and it says that XPQ is just the sum of XI over all PQ admissible. So let me show you just an example here. And xi is 
some sort of product or X capital I is some sort of product? X I is oh <coughs> I'm sorry I forgot to write to the name. X I is a sort of a product and we define like this X I three I two inverse mm -hmm. X I three I four. This sort of monomial with the alternating plus one. So let's talk about this. So let's. So that's the triangulation. That's So what is x? Repetitions are allowed. Sorry? So you, you can visit the same. I can visit the same yeah. vertex. Right. I can, but I yeah, cannot but go, go beyond this. So that somehow guarantees there's only finite. Yeah, and that's, yeah, <coughs> that's this is finite. So I, I, I can give you more sophisticated examples, but they, they will be the old things. Okay, but and so now then I can use the same relations that I raised, uh, but for uh, surfaces. I have to take in mind some degenerate case, but <coughs> let me just maybe skip it for now. And it actually gives you some interesting coral. Uh, 
so with the following connection, <coughs> U n minus k, U n equals one plus U n minus one, U n plus one minus k when L is equal. You the variables are non commutative? Yes, <coughs> they are non commutative. exactly how one can make such conjectures. Conception mm. that this was just sort of intuition or something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I understand how, uh, so he explained how, how he checks such things. <clears throat> when you are checking such things, you just basically you work with the matrices S to Z, S of Z. Because when you invert such matrix, you also have integers. So when you do computations, if you have also integer matrices, then there is a hint that maybe there is this phenomenon. If you have, if you have rational, numbers, it shows that uh, this is not true. Okay. But, but uh, so, so I cannot tell you how one can make conjecture, I can tell you basically how to approve this conjecture. And basically that's from matters of time, but uh, this is sort of, a, uh, you take a sort of a cylinder with a certain triangulations and then you apply and then you use the theorem for this, uh, for this time, which is but for, for, for surfaces. There are some subtle points here, but I will just <coughs> But it comes actually very naturally, so that's something you know. Yeah, but I, I would like actually to return back and to explain how we arrived to just how we arrived to this conjecture, to this to this relations. 